This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We go now from Moscow, Russia, to Kiev, Ukraine, to look at the situation in eastern Ukraine and the humanitarian crisis unfolding. There are some two million people face the threat of violence and displacement if the conflict escalates. For more, uh, in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, we go to speak with Jan Eglin, the secretary general of the Norwegian Refugee Council. Jan, welcome back to Democracy Now! You were just in eastern Ukraine visiting the Donetsk and Luhansk regions and the contact line where tensions are high. Can you describe what you saw? Well, I was uh, there now for the last 72 hours, uh, met with lots of com uh, completely exhausted, freezing, uh, poor, miserable communities along the contact line. And they, their message, of course, to the world is, you know, enough of this political military chess game that everybody's obsessed with, we are suffering now. We've suffered for eight years with conflict. Our communities have been divided in Donetsk and in Luhansk. There is a, a front line that has gone through families and communities now for eight years. Uh, we need we need reconciliation. We need peace. Uh, stop this escalation towards another catastrophe. And Jan, as you've pointed out, uh, it's not just uh, the risk of increasing numbers of refugees and IDPs as a result of the present situation. There are already uh, 1.6 million uh, uh, internally displaced uh, Ukrainians. Uh, who have been forced to flee their homes uh, uh, in the midst of this ongoing war in Donbas. The, indeed, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people displaced. Uh, some of them are working as, as my colleagues uh, here in, in Ukraine. Uh, I have colleagues here who haven't seen their parents for years because all of the border crossings not border crossing. These are crossings uh, of, uh, of the contact line, the front line, which is within Ukraine and through Lohansk and, and Donetsk. The, the, there are seven crossing points. Six of them are, are basically shot. Uh, there is one where there is still uh, people being able to cross on foot. It's 90 percent down from what it was uh, before the COVID, which became the excuse of especially the authorities in the, in the non-government control area to keep people out. Now, uh, th th this suffering has been ongoing for too long, really. Uh, we were able to make progress in recent years. The number has come down in the people still being displaced. We operate with a figure of 850,000. We were planning to do further progress. Now, all of this risks to be erased in an instant. Uh, there is, if there is war, there will be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of more uh, people displaced. Two million people live within 20 kilometers of the front line on either side. Well, Jan, uh, we spoke to you last about the situation in Afghanistan. And if you could give us an update on what uh, uh, the situation is there now, uh, the UN just having made a humanitarian aid appeal that is record-breaking at $4.4 billion just to prevent a famine this year. No, yeah, I mean, in, in, in Afghanistan, it's a, it's, a, it's a race against the clock and against the freezing cold and against famine, really, for millions and millions. Uh, the, the, there, uh, we are held back, not primarily anymore, by the Taliban authorities. We're held back by the previous sanctions regimes against the Taliban, which means that we do not still have functioning banks that can transfer our aid money to Afghanistan. We have to truck in uh, life-saving equipment from Pakistan and Iran, you, and thereby buying nothing in the country because we have no money in the country, thereby uh, ourselves contributing to the downward spiral in this 
economy. This was warned. I said it when I came back at the end of September uh, last year. The, the mothers, the widows told us we will freeze and we will starve to death this winter unless there is an economy coming back, some uh, employment for our, our husbands and the day laborers, and a scale up of, of aid, which is very difficult in the present context because of the financial uh, you know, squeeze and freeze on Afghanistan. So you've called the sanctions devastating um, against Afghanistan. You s just met with the Taliban leader in Oslo, and you spoke to the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations Friday, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, about both Afghanistan and Syria? I, I did. And, and the week before that, I, I had a good meeting with the U.S. Treasury together with uh, non-governmental organizations, se secretary generals of the United States. So what we have is now a, a, a lot of declarations from the coming out of Washington that says that there is nothing precluding us to work in the country under, under sanctions. There is it's not criminal to transfer money there. It, it's, it's all allowed. What I'm lacking is the proactiveness to say to banks, don't be risk averse. Start to operate again in Afghanistan. Help these humanitarian groups to get going. Help them to save lives. Set up shop there. Uh, who, who will enable there to be a central bank of Afghanistan to operate again so they can issue banknotes, they can get the economy going back? It's not, it's not helping the Taliban. Who wants to help the Taliban? I mean, they, they took power with, with guns in their hands. We need to help the 40 million civilians that were left behind by NATO when NATO rushed for the door in, in August of last year. Uh, Jan Egland, I also want to ask you about another story that the Norwegian Refugee Council is weighing in on. At least 60 people killed during an attack on a camp for displaced people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. At least 15 of the victims were children. Aid groups are calling on the Congolese authorities to ensure the protection of civilians in the area amidst this spade of violent attacks by militant groups. Can you talk about what's happening there and what you're calling for? Well, again, we woke up uh, now just a couple of days back to the stories of are the children that we provide education for being killed by armed men who attack the most vulnerable, women, children, the displaced. It's a, it's a, it's a camp in Ituri that has seen basically constant violence now for a generation. And it seems that we're not able to get protection of civilians functioning in, 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 in the Congo. It, 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 the protection is really a, 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 an industry of seminars. It's not protection on the ground. These people, families, came to this camp because they fled from elsewhere. The one thing they were seeking was some peace and protection and they didn't get anything but new violence. So the perpetrators for this must be found, and there must be an end to the impunity. And of course, the government of, of, of the Congo can do much more, and those who support the government can weigh in and do much more. And Jan, in the last minute, if you could talk about uh, uh, the situation in Syria, you just testified. Uh, at the Security Council, and now the latest news with special forces having killed uh, the head of ISIS, U.S. special forces. Well, uh, it's uh, it's uh, I, what what we comment on is the need for protection of the civilian uh, population. Um, there is a, a a war against legitimate armed targets, which are, for example, ISIS fighters. What I am afraid of is a lot of drones and warfare from high grounds from the air that is 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 uh, is hurting civilians. Uh, we'll find out more about this one. Uh, was was there even children killed? And if such, 
it is in violation of, of humanitarian law. It, it's as much in violation of humanitarian law if it's done by the U.S. as if it's done by the, the Russian Air Force or the Syrian Air Force. We need to know more ab about this. Of course, terrorists in ISIS are legitimate targets. Uh, and the latest news we have is that the U.S. has denied their special forces attack killed civilians. Um, witnesses are saying at least six children, four women with body scars, uh, parts scattered near the site of the assault. Jan Eglund, want to thank you for being with us, uh, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, joining us from Kiev in Ukraine. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is currently accepting applications for a human resources manager. Learn more and apply at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced with Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warrenoff, Tarina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tamari Astudio, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey, Masood, Mary Conlon. Our general manager is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Staley, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Miguel Nagara, Hugh De Grand, Dennis Moynihan. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Stay safe.